Welcome back to Let's Build a Tetris Like Unreal Engine 5. Uh, I've been forgetting to show this in my updates, but um, this is what I've been working off of. Uh, so in the last video, I covered the Tetramino Q and the Active Inplay Tetramino. Those are done. Um, I don't usually fill out like all the to-dos. Um, I just kind of like as I'm working on things and I think of things that I'm going to work on next, I start adding them to to on to to do so today's update is a little boring because there's a lot of refactoring that i did uh you definitely want to do this every now and again so that your code doesn't get out of control um for anyone who isn't a programmer themselves it's a very important tip refactor often um and then the other thing i wanted to do that will play into this moving the tetramino thing based on player input is you need to get the angle from the tetramino that's in play to the player input. Um, that is mostly gonna have to do for this auto rotate. There, I am planning on most likely making like a manual rotation mode uh, so that you can play it in a more classic Tetris manner with like a controller or a keyboard and mouse. Um, but the auto rotate is mostly so that you can play with like just one hand with a keyboard or with a mouse and a button click or so you can play on mobile um, but i am planning on having classic controls so without further ado let's look at the refactoring a little bit i need to this over here okay so all the refactoring had to do with the player board itself um so the first thing you'll notice is that there are a lot more functions um the main idea here is a general rule of thumb is that a function shouldn't take up more than like one page of code. Uh, so if you have like a function that's calling a whole bunch of stuff and doing a whole bunch of things, function should have like a very well de well defined function, uh, thus the name, and uh, it should do that thing well and efficiently. So it gives you kind of a division of responsibilities and it helps you keep in the mindset of reducing repeated code. Um, most of the work is coming from this uh, set tetramino in play timers. Uh, ultimately, I want to use timers to control the movement. So if I want to move it straight to the right, um, then I will have a a timer that only moves the tetramino one block to the right every certain amount of time. Um, but I'm going to break the angles down into eight. So it'll be an angle is of 45 degrees. So this is what you're seeing down here is I'm getting, uh, I set a variable to an eighth of a circle, which is 45 degrees. And um, I'm getting the angle to the input by a function that I created. I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, but then I'm using this eighth of a circle to check if it's in the negative for the first four or if it's in the positive for the second four. And that'll let me know um, with the eight different directions that your input could be. Uh, this will make more sense when I break into the actual uh, gameplay. Uh, but let's get into the refactors show. So um, check set in play. I named it this because it's checking to see if there is a tetramino in play. And if it is a null pointer, then it's popping one off the queue. This is all it's doing. And then it's moving the tetramino in play into the top center position. And then it adds a new one to the queue. So it's checking if one's there. And if it's not, it's setting one to the next. And it's just a couple of lines of code. That's all it's doing. Um, the next thing is, is I wanted to get the input location. So down here, uh, this code used to be up where this function call is. All of this was pretty much in this just like get player input or uh, I forget what I had it named before. I renamed it to this set Tetramino in play timers. Um, but I basically just wanted a function that returned a vector of where the player's input was. 
And that's from this uh, creating the hit result, checking if we have a player controller reference, and then we're getting the hit result under the cursor. I'm checking the visibility channel. Um, I basically just used visibility because even though the thing that I'm actually searching for is not visible, I want it to also collide with things that are visible or not. I, I basically created a backplate that I'm casting a ray out from, or that's what this is doing, is casting a ray out from the screen. And when it hits something, it's setting it to the hit result that you're passing in here. Um, I forget what this false is for. Oh, uh, this is just B trace complex means it's a Boolean and trace complex is checking if you're checking against uh, the complex collision, which is basically every single polygon in your model or the collision polygons, which is usually much simpler. In my case, it is just a big like backplate cube. Um, so very efficient. Uh, checking against complex collision you're going to be checking against you know thousands or millions of polygons not great for performance but sometimes you might want to do that in very limited situations so we're getting the input location and then i wanted to have a separate thing to show the input location currently all this is doing is drawing a debug sphere. I can't remember if this existed before. I don't think it did in my last video. Eventually I'm going to replace this with a Niagara system, um, which is Unreal Engine 5's uh, latest particle system. I think they used to have a different one. I don't know what the name for it was, but Niagara is the latest and greatest uh, particle system. So I'll make some fancy graphic to show, I don't know, sparkles or whatever, wherever you're pointing or touching um, but that's all it's going to do it's going to take the input location and then show it to the user next thing i want to do is here is some where some actual logic is uh there is a built-in function um i forget exactly what it's called but it's checking against the x y coordinates it's essentially taking a 3d vector and treating it like it's 2d on the XY coordinates. The problem with using that is that it, um, I'm using the X and Z coordinates, so up and down and left and right from my perspective. I, I could rotate the entire thing, but since I am using um, uh, like a background with uh, like a sun and all that stuff, that might change in the future. But for that reason, I wanted the shadows to be cast at an angle and that kind of stuff. It'll just look better if I'm using it in the up and down of world space rather than the X and Y like a 2D game. Um, so what you need to do and what that function was doing itself was uh, in my function, I'm setting the Y to zero and then I'm normalizing it. And if you're not familiar with normalizing, it just means that you're taking a vector that is an angle and a direction, um, and you are reducing the length of that vector to a length of one. So the X, Y, and Z will, no matter which way it's pointing, those will all mathematically lead to a hypotenuse of just one. Um, it's a lot of math that you don't need to know <laughs> uh, but basically i'm treating it like it's a 2d plane by zeroing out the y for both the input and the uh existing tetramino i think v1 uh setting the timers Okay, so we're going from the Tetraminos location to the input location. So V1 is the Tetramino, V2 is input. So after I zero those out and then get the safe normal, it's important to zero out the one that you're trying to uh, 
the third dimension that you're trying to ignore first um, because that will have an effect on what is returned by get save normal. Um, there is a built-in function to ATAN2 or called ATAN2 that it returns an angle in radians uh, based on an, a, an X and a Y. And so I'm passing in the Y. So V2 minus V1 uh, in the Z, which uh, for me is up and down, replaces the Y. And then V2 minus V1 for the X. Uh, that is getting me the distance between the two points. This is returning radians, so to make it more um, human readable, at least to me anyway, I'm used to thinking in terms of degrees, not radians. Um, so I convert it radians to degrees and return the degrees. All right, so then we're finally getting into the purpose of this function. Um, not fully because we're not setting the timers yet but i will eventually uh so now i'm getting the angle of the input i'm taking an eighth of a circle 45 degrees and i'm checking if it's between zero and negative 45 degrees negative 45 to negative 90 and so on and so forth so that will handle if your input is below the in-play tetramino and then this group in the positive, so zero. Oh yeah, and you also want to make sure that you're handling the equals case. So since I'm thinking of it in terms of going around in a circle, let me pull up my drawing thing here. You have a circle, have all these directions. Um, here in this code, I'm handling the space between, uh, but I also want to check if it's equal to, so that would be in the case like right here, it would be exactly zero, right here it'd be exactly 45, not 44, 45, and down here it would be negative 40. Why do I keep doing that? My brain isn't working today. So then down here would be anything greater than zero, but less than, or less than zero, greater than negative 45, but you also want to handle this zero case. So, um, and you also want to handle the 45, negative 45, the 45, so on and so forth. Um, so what's happening here is I had to choose when I'm going in the negative direction, I'm always having the right side of it handle the equals. So I'm handling from greater than zero, that is, or less than zero, so that is negative one to uh, negative 45. And this is inclusive of 45. But when I'm handling the positive direction, I swap it. So down here, I'm handling the zero co collection, um, the zero, uh, situation and on the upper side since I'm going backwards around the circle from right to left I'm checking if it's less than an eighth of a circle so this case handles the zero but it won't handle the 45 here handles negative 45 but not the zero and then that way all 360 degrees are accounted for all right, so um, from here, I'm setting the angle to input. Um, I, I'm j this is just for outputting purposes. And then I'm uh, you know setting another F string, sanitizing the float to the angle and outputting it. Whereas pre previously I was just saying, oh, we inputting, now we're not inputting, that's it. And uh, with all that explanation out of the way, is there anything in big play, begin play? I was thinking about pulling this out, like making this a create queue or something like that, uh, but I don't know. And you know, if I'm following my own refactoring rules, 
setting up this enhanced input, I could probably pull this out into its own function too, because in begin play, all we're really doing is setting things up, which yeah, we're doing that here, um, but that's not the point of begin play. This is just a function that needs called. So I probably will refactor these out just for readability in begin play. I don't know if this will get real huge, um, but it can. So I probably should refactor that. Anyway, with all that explanation out of the way, I've been talking for 15 minutes now. Sorry, I have a tend to over explain. But I think to people that are interested in programming, this is the kind of behind the scenes stuff that I think it's difficult to kind of get this insight that this is what you're thinking about. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm interested in making games, but making games is software engineering. So if you're not into software engineering, you're not going to be into code and you're not going to like making a game, no matter how much you love games. So remember that one, kids. Making games is software engineering. All right. So all that code and all that refactoring just for this. In the top left corner here, it's telling me I'm in the 45 degree. Oh, it starts at 180. 180. Oh, I messed something up. Oh, wait, I, I don't think I finished changing those uh, numbers. Oh, not that. Uh, where's my code? Where's my code? Let's look at this again. No, I'm actually setting it. Might have a bug here. Let me debug for a second. Okay, so <laughs> in a, a little bit of an example of debugging, um, first I'll show it working. So 45 to negative 45, and then it goes up around till it hits 180 again. And then it slowly decreases by 45 each time. All right. So what was the issue? The issue was that previously I was just taking the angle to input and I was overwriting it with the eighth of the circle times the number. Cause I just wanted to see the degrees. Um, I knew it was working when I output angle to input directly into my debug message. So I knew it wasn't up here, um, but I was so confused. I'm like, why would it work for this, but not for this? And it all had to do with the order that I was doing these if statements. I probably could have done if else's. I, that probably would have been maybe a better way to do it, uh, but it won't ultimately matter because um, instead of overwriting angle to output, I just made an output specific thing. And that's what's really is going to be happening inside these if statements is I'm going to be setting timers um, to move the tetra minnow like down to uh, and the Z axis in over one on the X axis, that kind of thing. So ultimately, I'm not going to be just like outputting it. So the functionality of these things does work as long as you're not <laughs> overwriting the angle to input. So um, it worked here because of the order that I was doing them. So I was going from less than to even smaller. So it would only ever get the one that was the smallest. But here I'm doing the opposite. So if I had the, uh, let me grab my pen, do this. So if I was in the 45 degree slice of the pie right here, um, it would set my angle to be 45. But then once the next if check checked, this would be um, big enough to kick this off which would reset it here and then it would keep resetting until it was always 180 and that just uh 
is no good. No good at all. For a second, I thought it was because I was using sanitize float and I wasn't like multiplying by a dot F. I don't know. Sometimes C++ can be like super specific about things, but I didn't think that was necessary when this was already declared as a float. Anyway, that's what was going on. Um, this is getting really long, so I'm going to end this here. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.